Ever wondered what makes a French woman French? A certain je ne sais quoi? And a lot more. Follow in the footsteps of storyteller Edith de Belleville, a native Parisian who brings to life the hidden histories of the great women who shaped and influenced the France we know today. In each part of this radio series, Edith will take you to a different arrondissement of Paris with plenty of anecdotes and secrets to share. Ooh la la, mais oui. Episode number three, Christine de Pizan. She was born in 1365 near Venice because, in fact, she was born Italian. Uh, her father is a Tommaso di Pizzano because they were coming from a city uh, near Bologna. As you know, Bologna there was a very prestigious university, and her father was a t- was teacher in the Bologna University, astrologue because astrology was extremely important in Middle Ages, and he was very educated. And the, the, the king of um, France, who was a Charles the Fifth, Charles the Wise, because he was a very wise uh, king. Instead of war in the battlefield, he preferred to use people who were wise, and he was uh, he was surrounded by counselors, magistrates, judges, notaries, lawyers. And he asked him to come. He was so Thomas de Pizano, Pizan in French, translated more French, became his doctor and astrologer at the court of France. Very prestigious. So she was five years old when she arrived in Paris. And Paris was a city where you had the highest population of the Western world. So she was very... Um, absolutely astonished by the, the, the city, very lively. When I hear people complaining about noise in Paris, so you should have seen in the Middle Ages, huh? <laughs> where you couldn't talk, we, could, we wouldn't have been able to talk like this in a, in a silence. So she arrived in Paris and she was living in the Hotel Saint-Paul in Le Marais. Uh, near the, the, everything was destroyed, unfortunately now, but it was very, you had the lions, uh, you had the garden. We have the made this image of Middle Ages uh, dark, but it was not so dark. It was really refined. They were eating, you had the courtly love, you know, something a bit, okay, for people who had money, of course. Uh, so she was educated, which was extremely rare because she was a woman by her father and he taught Latin, Italian, math and science. At 15 years old, she married Etienne de Castel, who was the secretary of the king, and uh, she didn't choose a husband, of course, because at this time you don't choose a husband, but she said she was extremely happy. She wrote about it. For her, the wedding was something extremely interesting, and um, the husband was uh, cute, we guess, because she wrote it. This is how we know, because she wrote about her life. And 8 of November 1390, for Christine, it's the end of everything because Etienne de Cassel died. He was only 34 years old. He was with the king Charles VI because Charles V died before and he died from the plague. And uh, she, it was awful. She, she was a widow, no husband, and she had three kids, a mother, two brothers and a niece to support. Can you imagine? And no money. So she loved so much her husband. She was so devastated that she thought to kill herself, yes, to commit suicide because and her mother died after. She wrote very moving poetry. One says, you know, we are just near the river. And she thought, okay, I'm so happy. I sum up her poetry. So I'm so happy because I'm going to join my dear Etienne, my dear mother, my dear father. I'm going to uh, plunge into the river. And finally, she didn't. She said, I can't. I'm like the um, captain of a boat and I have to be strong. I have to be like a man, she said. Being like a man and I have to do something to save them. The, th- the second problem she had, that she had many debts. 
because people who are not very uh, honest said, oh, but you, Etienne, I gave him money. Now you have to give me back the money. So for 13 years, she people did sue her. She had to sold all the money, all the books, all the rich uh, things she had to give back the money. And the king didn't pay the salary of Etienne, so she had to... It was for 13 years, can you imagine? 30 years, and she was lonely, alone. It was awful, and her mother before said to her, but why don't you get married again? Because it was Middle Ages, you not... When you're widow, immediately you, you get married. She refused. That was something extremely rare for Middle Ages, because at 25 years old, she said, no, I will never get married. I will be faithful to my beloved Etienne. And meaning widow, meaning lonely, meaning alone, you know. So she was extremely depressed. And you know how she reacted? What did she do? She wrote. She wrote poems in the evening. She was going in the Latin district where we are exactly, crossing the bridges, and she was walking in the, to, to, because you didn't have the printed, the books were not printed at this time, so she had to copy books. This is how she get money. And in the evening, in a little room, a scriptorium, it's in Latin, you a woman writing, and it only with ink. This is how she wrote, and this is how she survived, just writing emotion and what happened because she had a good uh, now we would say good networking uh, even if she was a widow she knew before the, the court so people were very moved a few friends about a poem a ballad and they say oh you should publish I mean you should do something with the ballad because it's very uh, nice and she did and people were very enthusiastic about uh, books because she was for the first time a woman was writing and she was writing about uh, feelings of solace that may comfort me. How did you get to know about Christine de Pizan? Yes, I would even tell how did I meet her, because for me she's very lively, still alive. I met her for the first time like six years ago. I was in a, a party with many American people and I talked with an American lady. And when I asked her, why are you in Paris? She said, because I'm, I'm writing a book about Christine de Pizan. And I said, oh yes, okay, well... I knew by name, of course, as a Olympe de Gouges, as a feminist, Olympe de Gouges in the French Revolution, or Terroine de Méricourt, another feminist French Revolution. For me, I knew just vaguely the name Christine de Pizan, a feminist. But that's it. And I felt so ashamed that this American lady, who knew much more than me, and I remember this, this woman, she didn't even speak French. So I thought, wow, French from Middle Ages, it's difficult when you're French, but for an American. So I read about her little by little and I discovered how Christine de Pizan uh, when I had the problem in my life helped me as maybe you will think I'm crazy but sometimes I, I hear a voice talking to me well wait, she talks to me in the middle-aged uh, French which is uh, not very uh, understandable but when I hear her she speaks very modern French that's the miracle of a <laughs> and I'm like Joan of Arc you know I'm hearing voices <laughs> but uh, no she's a very courageous brave she was the first feminist so she, she did she re really was a lawyer of women she wrote for women she explained to women in middle ages that they have had a role to play all the women businesswomen the queen, even the, the calling in French 
les femmes de folle vie, meaning the prostitutes, they had a role to play in the society. She's the first political journalist because she wrote books about politics. She wrote books about education, how to educate the men and women because she did insist that the little girls had need education. She wrote for the peace, Le Livre de la Paix. She wrote many, many books. And more interesting, if you're a writer, she's the first female writer who, was a, who received money to write, you know, which is the first, I can tell in the world, yes, yeah, the first in f end of 14th and beginning of 15th century, Middle Ages. So you had before then Christine de Pizan, of course, you had women who were writing, like uh, Marie de France, or Hildegard de, de Bingen, the German, or Marguerite de Porrect, who was burned at stake because she wrote the book The Mirror. So you had women, of course, who wrote mystical and poetry and everything. But Christine de Pizan, for the first time, she received money to write. And she was a woman. Can you imagine? Middle Ages. Tell us what Christine de Pizan wrote. So she wrote many books first, like about 23 books in her life, but she became famous writing the poetry. She's 35 years old, and you have to know in Middle Ages, if you want to write a book, you need somebody behind you who has money, yeah? because uh, to you know, print it, and it costs a lot. So Isabeau de Bavière, the Queen of France, uh, helped her a lot, and Louis d'Orléans helped her a lot uh, too. So she wrote another book, very famous, is the biography of Charles V because it's um, Philippe de Bold, Philippe Le Hardy, Duke of Burgundy, was the brother of Charles V, wants that people, because it's France, start to have problems, you know, it's not very as it was a piece when there was Charles the Wise. He wants to show that his brother was a great king. So as Christine knew personally the king, as she was at the court of Charles V, he asked her to write the biography. So she writes the biography. So we can tell she was before the biography of the kings were written by monks. For the first time, it's not, not only it's not a monk, but it's a woman who writes a biography. And her books is so great that even now, historians still use a book to explain how was the court child V. Well known, I have to say, because the Chateau de Vincennes and La Bastille. It's Charles V who built La Bastille, who was destroyed much later during the French Revolution. Edith, tell us in what ways Christine de Pizan is a feminist. She's a feminist because she really she wrote a book very famous, The City of Ladies, in 1945. Uh, everything started with the Le Roman de la Rose, the, the Romance of the Rose, which was a, a novel uh, very well known in 12th century about courtly love and very romantic. Written and by a man. Guillaume de Loris, yes. And after you have another man, Jean de Main, who say, okay, I'm going to, let's say, to write the chapter second of the Romance of the Rose. And the way he described a woman was extremely awful. More or less, he said that all women are prostitutes and they are here to to, as a sexual um, object and uh, it's great to rape them I mean, I sum up, but it's something absolutely awful and when Christine who, know, who was well known at this time she wrote this she said what it's awful I cannot let this so she, first she, she wrote letters and after she said I have to write a book to defend the honor of women and she had the idea she thought why we have all this image of the Eve in the Bible the, the will the devil the bad woman the demon, it's because nobody wrote the role of woman in history. So she had the idea to talk about all famous and good women in the Bible, like uh, Esther, Judith, Rebecca, or Virgin Mary, or the Blanche de Castille, the mother of St. Louis, all the great uh, queen we had in France, or Sappho, the poetress. And she's the first woman who wrote history according the woman's eyes, which is very interesting, showing to the woman, look all this woman, they were great women. We're not all bad and prostitute and it's awful. And you cannot, she said, you cannot justify rape. So that's why she wrote the book, City of Ladies. And it's an allegory 
story like an utopia where to write about the lady of justice, the lady of rectitude, the lady um, of reason are building a city only for ladies to protect ladies, you know, something very new and very feminist, saying she did encourage women, as I told already, to find your role in society and they are good women because it was really um, chauvinist, people didn't like women a lot. So the reaction, it was we called the Quirrell of Rose, who was the first uh, literate uh, uh, battle in Europe, you know. So, say, people reacted, especially the uni Jean Demain was a, a man from the Sorbonne, you can imagine, he was extremely prestigious. And the reaction of the people, most men, say, how dare you, you're a poor woman, uh, how dare you criticize Jean Demain, you're a poor woman. And she say, yeah, I dare, I'm going to write, you know. You have to think about the courage she had to write this book. So she dedicated this book to Isabeau de Bavière, who was the queen. So as I told already, she has helped. And you have, um, I think it's Jean Gerson, the, who was the chancellor, the chief of university, who helped her too. Fortunately, in this battle with the ink, she, she was helped. And I can tell she won, because it was a huge bestseller, The City of Ladies. And uh, that's why she's a feminist. She, she really, she was a lawyer. I always say she was a lawyer of uh, women. In, mm. the, in the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wrote a second book, The Treasure of the City of Ladies. Was that like a sequel? <laughs> Yes, she, she wrote uh, two books very important about uh, the woman. And she wrote after there was a civil war, the War of Hundred Years. And again, she said, what can I do, me, as an intellectual? So again, she used uh, only weapon is ink. So she wrote Le Traité de la Paix, but saying, stop this stupid war. Think, she thought again about women, think about the widows, think about the sisters, think about the cousin of the woman who are sad of this war. Stop it, stop it, stop it. But it was absolutely not efficient because you have to think in 1418 Paris was invaded by the Burgundy and the English and it was a real chaos. Extremely uh, difficult and extremely uh, dangerous. So she wrote books and she wrote something, I have to say something important now, because she say, be careful, be careful, she called dame opinion, lady opinion. We can't say that she was even the first political journalist in the world, because she say, like, be careful people who are uh, demagogue, you know, who are using people, as we see now, with the election in the world, and people in the world. And I'd like to, just to read few in English about uh, extract of the city of the ladies, what she wrote about education of girls because as I told in La Sorbonne or in school, I mean school you could find but it was the university was forbidden and I remember the first time when I went in La Sorbonne, me, a uh, humble uh, woman, uh, when I did study law in a Latin quarter, I was uh, moved because I thought again, well, uh, thank God, I can say thank God, but I mean, it's not Middle Ages, I'm allowed to study in La Sorbonne, I wouldn't have been in there. Thanks to people like Christine de Pizan. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's why I'd like to, 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 to an English translation. Not all men, and especially the wisest, share the opinion that it is bad for women to be educated. But it is very true that many foolish men have claimed this because it displeased them that women knew more than they did. So it's very modern, and you can see how the style of uh, Christine is very simple. You know, okay, they translated from uh, Middle Age uh, French, but it's very simple. She was translated in uh, Italian, English, and Flemish, you know, very well known. At, at the time? Absolutely, she was a rock star, very well known. She had the influence. And what is interesting that uh, when there was the civil war in Paris, she said, okay, now I give up, I'm tired, I'm old. I go to see my, my um, daughter, who she's in the Poissy, Covent of Poissy, Le Couvent de Poissy, and I will stay with her. And for 11 years, she didn't write anything, and she was sad. And suddenly, 8th of May, 1429, in Orléans, she hear that, uh, she, remember I told you that she said the peace will come from a lady. She always say things about the widow, the sisters, exactly. That they are the strength of the nation. Absolutely. She said the peace will come from the woman. 
she heard that a teenager who was 17 years old in few weeks delivered Orléans from the enemy, the English. Who was this lady? Joan of Arc. Absolutely, Jeanne d'Arc. So she was extremely moved. So after 11 years of silence, she wrote, it's her last book, Le Ditier de Jeanne d'Arc. And she's so moved that she said, I have to write something. You know, I knew it, I knew it. I told you, nobody wanted to believe me. But that's why she was extremely smart. And she, she, she wrote a poetry for Jeanne d'Arc. Fortunately for her, she didn't see what happened to the poor Jeanne d'Arc. She, she died in uh, 1431, um, something like this. She was um, 65 years old. You know that Joan of Arc asked the English, please go back home. She didn't say this nice way, but thanks to her, Charles VII were in, uh, she they arrived in Notre Dame, by the way, and uh, uh, before in Reims to be, to be the king. She helped the king. And uh, he, he authorized all the family of Jeanne d'Arc to have the, the name d'Arc. told you about a, a great French woman in history and the lesson uh, we can have from this great French woman. And my first chapter is Christine de Pizan because the lesson of Christine is me, my motto, you know, when I'm very depressed and when I think uh, life is too difficult, I think about Christine de Pizan and I think, okay, she had a uh, Three kids, a niece, a mother, and there was no uh, APL, uh, RSA. She was the only breadwinner. Absolutely, and you know, not like now, no welfare system. Social security or yes. anything. Yes, yeah. and a pass navigo to take the metro, yeah. nothing, nothing. It was, it was very dangerous and no welfare system. And she did succeed, thanks to writing. She did what she wanted to do. And the, my motto always, when I'm very uh, depressed, is uh, two um, sentences she wrote, in, I say in French. She said, um, je ne sais comment je dure, Dieu seul sait ce que j'endure. Which, more or less in English, we could say, I don't know how I survive, God only knows uh, how... I'm suffering, something like this. Sorry, it's not a poetry, but anyway, it's my, my simple way to translate, which is very simple and very efficient, meaning think about Christine de Pizan and don't complain, ladies, huh? because uh, she, she did succeed. And I would like to thank my great uh, literature teacher, Monsieur Bachelot, because he talked about Christine de Pizan, but I'm a big fan. And I'd like to say, I think really that literature or poetry can save the world. I'm very, it's another, another utopia. Notre Dame de Paris was saved thanks to Victor Hugo, the famous French writer. When he wrote, I think in English it's the hunchback of Notre Dame, in Paris, Notre Dame de Paris, it was in the 19th century. It was such a success that the book, a bestseller in all Europe, that all Europeans were coming to Paris to see Notre Dame the Cathedral. But it was in ruins, it was awful, there was nothing to see. And Victor Hugo uh, wrote to Prosper Mérimée, who was the chief, to rebuild. He said, it's a shame. Look, there's people, the tourists, they come to see, there's nothing to see, we have to rebuild it. So Prosper Mérimée asked to Violet Le Duc, famous architect, to rebuild it. So finally, this is what I always say when I do the tour guide about Middle Ages and the Notre Dame de Paris to, the, to my clients, few grams of paper, Notre Dame de Paris, the book, saved tons of stone, you know, just how literature can save the world. If Christine de Pizan was here today in this society, who would she be compared to? Yeah, first, I would say, you know, when there was a big, big demonstrations of the people, of the women and men, uh, we have to think about men, who support the American woman with the, 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 the president, I thought immediately about her, you know, they, they, they called themselves the nasty woman. Which is what Donald Trump called Hillary Clinton when they were campaigning. Absolutely. And I thought the first nasty woman is here, it's Christine de Pizan, you know, absolutely. She would have been extremely happy. I'm sure she saw them, the woman from a, on, a, on the sky, you know, seeing her. And uh, it's something f interesting because she became well-known, Christine de Pizan, in 1970. Thanks to the American feminists. So me, I'm very grateful to the American woman 
because it's the American woman who, who discovered, rediscovered the American. And, and I think now this is our turn. We, the French ladies, the French woman, with Christine de Pizan as a woman so feminist, as so smart, to help American, our American sisters, to say, don't give up and do like Christine de Pizan Middle Ages, use your weapon you have, ink, anything to, to, to resist. That this is what we have to do courage to the American sisters, yes, with Christine. <laughs>